And now, as we mentioned earlier, it's suspected that incendiary bombs were used over Donetsk. To discuss that, let's now talk to a former UK Army officer and Scotland Yard detective and anti-terrorism specialist Charles Shubridge, who was the first person to investigate Israel's use of white phosphorus in the 2008-2009 Gaza campaign. Thank you so much, Mr. Shubridge, for uh, joining us here in IT International. Well, uh, let's take another look at uh, the video of the, the suspected attack. I know you've seen it. Uh, did it look like incendiaries to you? Well, if this video is genuine and it should be said that so far there's nothing to suggest that it isn't, then indeed it does show many of the characteristics one would associate uh, with the use of white phosphorus or very similar um, incendiary. In particular, you've got uh, bursts of large numbers of small particles of very brightly uh, burning uh, material. Uh, in other words, this has been delivered by um, artillery or mortar rockets or perhaps aircraft delivered but it's bursting relatively high in the sky and then uh, characteristically it's falling very quickly to earth. Um, this is a feature of white phosphorus and similar materials because uh, a normal illuminant uh, such as flares and we saw a lot of those for example being used in the Gaza attacks recently and indeed we've seen them being used in East Ukraine quite regularly they will uh, of course come to earth much more slowly so that the illumination effect is extended in other words they're often attached to parachutes. Clearly that isn't the case with what's happening here. Um, there could be other explanations. I mean, it could be that white phosphorus is being used indeed or something similar as an illuminant round. But nonetheless, if it's used in built up areas, um, it uh, is almost certainly going to have an effect on the ground. That incendiary effect is uh, uh, particularly uh, severe uh, against buildings and particularly against uh, people. Uh, uh, if indeed that's what's um, happening and being used because white phosphorus is a potent incendiary. It um, uh, burns through to the bone and can't be put out with water. I would add that another feature of white phosphorus normally associated with it is, uh, a is large volumes of smoke. Uh, they can't be seen clearly in this video, but that could be, of course, because uh, it's dark, dark uh, darkness and uh, because it's nighttime. Well, uh, you've just explained to us, uh, you know, what, what uh, the potential effects could be and how, in fact, dangerous uh, this substance is. But um, you know, two months ago, the town of Slavyansk came under what could be uh, the white phosphorus uh, bombing and attack. But what should be the reaction of the international community uh, to this uh, if, uh, you know, we know that white phosphorus is banned? And, uh, um, you know, how, what, what sort of reaction should be to this? Well, one might recall um, back in 2008 or 2009 um, when um, uh, Israel did use, for example, white phosphorus in uh, in its attacks uh, then and um, uh, whilst it's uh, quite common for uh, Israel uh, and its actions to be slightly overlooked by the media and the Western governments their use of white phosphorus on that occasion uh, did attract a very severe international condemnation and so that puts it in context and indeed uh, Israel as a result of that condemnation and criticism uh, stopped using white phosphorus and there isn't any evidence so far I think that they used it in these recent assaults on Gaza and so if indeed it's being used here in urban areas for an illeg illegitimate purpose and if it's being used uh, as an incendiary weapon in um, urban areas or against um, uh, urban areas even worse then it could raise issues of um, war crimes but really uh, as indeed happened with Slavyansk when allegations were made there was some evidence presented that white phosphorus was indeed being used Ukraine denied it but at the end of the day uh, the onus, uh, I think, must be on Ukraine to uh, assure or reassure the community and even reassure the people uh, in East Ukraine and Donetsk, in this case Slavyansk before, as to what the kind of munition is that they're using. They could, of course, clear this up very quickly simply by revealing uh, and having it verified by people who know what they're talking about on the ground and elsewhere as to what the weapon is or the luminance is that they're using on this occasion. And, and they could um, satisfy uh, this inquiry, I think, very easily. Uh, failing that, of course, some kind of independent investigation would be needed. Well, uh, Mr. Shubridge, thanks so much for your insight into uh, uh, this uh, situation. That was Charles Shubridge talking to us, a uh, former British Army officer and intelligence expert.